Um, as we get going live here, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today on, uh, on our uh, continuation of the Navigating the Coronavirus Economy series. And really, this has been transitioning into just things you need to be doing to grow your business and grow your franchise company. And that's the direction we're going to be taking this as this transitions and uh, the coronavirus situation is just normal and it's starting to trend in that direction. So what do you need to know? And I am grateful and thankful today to have our guest, uh, Mr. Paul Rocchio, uh, with the International Franchise Association. And I am, Paul and I have known one another for many years. He's fantastic. And uh, the International Franchise Association, if you are not familiar with it, does absolutely fantastic things. Uh, and Paul and I were just talking about this, about the... Um, it, it's about the the uh, advocacy and management. For me, that's one of my favorite pieces that the International Franchise Association is involved with, is actually managing the uh, the or supporting the advocacy of the franchise model, making sure that that it's protected and defended, as well as just protecting small business and looking out for the small business uh, group out there. So there are a lot of great things that the International Franchise Association is involved with. Uh, Paul here is going to give you an overview and talk about it and membership benefits and give go through why it makes sense and some of the extras that you get through the International Franchise Association. So, um, and as a, by way of introduction for those tuning in, my name, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Tom Dufour, the CEO with Big Sky Franchise Team. And as we go through, uh, if, if we have a small group, feel free to type something in the chat box. Um, we have people on here who will either uh, make an announcement or ask those questions. And if it's a small group, feel free to unmute yourself and ask Paul some questions. We can keep it pretty casual here. Um, so with that being said, I'd love to turn things over to Mr. Paul Rocchio with the International Franchise Association uh, to go over things. So, Paul, take it away. Thanks for being here. Oh, Tom, thank you so much. Really appreciate the opportunity. And, and, and thank you to, to Big Sky. You guys have been stellar uh, supplier members of IFA for quite some time now. And, and uh, yes, you and I go go back a, a, a while and uh, uh, miss, seeing your, miss seeing your face in person, man. It's been tough. It's been tough uh, working remotely for, uh, you know, since March 31st. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm coming to you today from my uh, kitchen table here in Alexandria, Virginia, which has been, you know, this is, this is where I operate from 630 in the morning until, you know, midnight. Um, you know, I've, I've never been a fan of telecommuting. Um, and uh, I'll say I'm, I, I'm more productive uh, working from home than I am in the office. So I don't know. I might, uh, you know, might, might keep doing it. Who knows? But, but uh, seriously, um, really, thanks for the opportunity. And of course, uh, you know, at IFA, um, uh, I believe, and of course I'm biased, but if you're involved in franchising, you really do need to be a part, you really do need to be a part of, uh, of IFA. Um, we promote, protect, and enhance franchising uh, globally. And, um, you know, as you said, you know, public policy, um, you know, advocacy is, is really one of the key things, uh, you know, we do at IFA. You know, I like to say I'm a, I'm a recovering lobbyist, um, uh, moved to D.C. Uh, to go to graduate school at the George Washington University, uh, worked on Capitol Hill, and then uh, got involved in association uh, work and worked at the chemical manufacturers and then at the Retail Industry Leaders Association and then was hired by IFA to, um, to uh, uh, oversee a political grassroots program and really start our, our political grassroots program and, um, and did that. And then, and then honestly, uh, you know, just kind of fell in love with the business format franchise model and working with entrepreneurs and even entrepreneurs on the supplier side like yourself, Tom, and uh, kind of got fed, fed up with, with lobbying and, and moved over to membership and development. And I've been you know, here at IFA almost 22 years now. Um, you know, so, so I like to think, I, you know, I like to think I've learned something about franchising in, in 22 years and, and, you know, you know, I, I jokingly like to tell people, you know, having been at IFA for so long, I'm either smart, stupid, or a little of both, but, um, but I'll tell you, I just, you know, I really do enjoy, enjoy working with and supporting all of our members and working for you guys. So, you know, again, uh, IFA, we promote, protect, and enhance franchising. Uh, our members are franchisors, uh, franchisees, and suppliers. You know, on the franchisor side, it's very unique because our membership is, is, you know, startup and emerging franchisors, 
and then it goes, you know, all the way, you know, up to very mature, uh, well-established brands. And honestly, I like to think that, that um, we provide, you know, we provide the same level of service to all of our, all of our members, but on the franchisor side, um, in, in some respects, the startup and emerging brands really do get, I think, more out of IFA because it's all about networking and education. Um, and, and of course, public policy and, and advocacy, but, but really it's, it's, it's learning how to be a franchisor. And this is what you do, Tom, on a daily basis. You take somebody who's a successful, you know, restaurateur, um, they may have three or four locations, but now they want a franchise. So they're really not in the restaurant business anymore. They're in the franchise business. And, and, and that's what you do to help your clients educate them on what they need to do know and do to become a franchisor because at the end of the day that's what you are you you're a franchisor you're really not in the restaurant business anymore and you know a lot of founders of franchise companies understand that um but but some folks that uh, you know don't have a franchise background they might still think they're in the hotel business for example but they're really not if especially if you know you know, 100% of your your units are, are franchised and you don't have any corporate locations. I mean, you really truly are in the franchise business. So, you know, again, um, you know, on the advocacy side, if I could just back up a little bit, I mean, you know, I have to give, you know, again, granted I'm biased, but I really have to give Matt Haller, uh, who heads up our government relations team and, and his entire team, uh, major kudos. Um, they were uh, instrumental in creating the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. They worked very closely with, with Congress uh, on the CARES Act, um, and they're currently working on the HEROES Act, though, uh, you know, politics are politics, and it looks like uh, nothing's gonna happen. Um, that could change over the weekend, uh, uh, but uh, he was mentioning this morning that, uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's, it's tied up in quote-unquote politics. But, uh, but just so you all know that uh, Matt and his team were directly instrumental in uh, the PPP uh, funds. Um, and, and obviously it benefited franchising because you know, we're, we're selfish, that's all we care about. But it ultimately ended up benefiting um, non-franchise businesses too. So at the end of the day, um, you know, that's, you know, you're, you know, as a member of IFA, uh, you know, I, and for those of you who are on the phone who are members, thank you very much. Um, you know, because we can't do what we do without your financial support through your membership dollars. Um, and just so, you know, so you all know, um, uh, we have different uh, and varying uh, membership, um, membership fees. But if you're a startup and emerging brand, if you have less than 200 franchised units, you could join IFA for uh, $1,650. Um, and you know, during the pandemic, I've been placing people on payment plans, um, even our renewing members, I've been placing on payment plans and working, uh, trying to work with everybody because, you know, listen, there's, there are some segments that during the pandemic are having a very tough time. Um, and there's, there are some verticals or segments that are doing extremely well right now. Um, but one thing, you know, we always like to uh, say in franchising is, is when there's a downturn in the, in the economy, Unlike the, the perfect storm back during the, the Great Recession of the you know, mid to late uh, you know, 2000s, um, you know, right now, and it's very unfortunate that, that a lot of people find themselves out of work, but a lot of those people will not have those jobs to go back to. Um, and we're starting to see a lot of those folks are, are looking towards franchising um, and owning their own business. So for franchise development, um, this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, a wonderful time for franchise development. And of course, you know, we only like to promote those folks that are members of IFA. Um, so as a member of IFA, you're listed on our website, franchise.org. You get to exhibit at the franchise expos that are produced by MFE Expositions. And actually, uh, uh, MFE has uh, the, the online expo coming up next week uh, and through the end of the month. So uh, October 15th through the 30th, uh, uh, will be the uh, online virtual expo. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all about getting, getting eyeballs and leads to, to look at your franchise. So um, um, there's still opportunities to, to have a virtual booth at the expo. I would encourage you to either reach out to me or, or uh, 
you could probably even get that information from Tom or contact MF, MFE directly. But uh, it's at the end of the day, listen, um, uh, there's numerous ways to, to get leads, whether you use a broker, uh, whether you, uh, you're listed on a web portal um, uh, or, or exhibiting at expos. But um, at the end of the day, uh, all you need is, is one solid lead and you get that one solid lead to close and it kind of pays, pays for itself. Um, but uh, the other thing that's very important um, in franchising is just continuing being educated or enhanced as we call it. And that's the main thing we do at IFA. Um, uh, we have our certified franchise program. Uh, I like to refer to it as a, a master's degree in franchising. It's the CFE designation. Um, though I'm an association guy, I did get my CFE a few years ago because, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I work in franchising. Um, and, and, you know, whether it's taking our FranGuard course, which is our sales compliance course, which is mandatory to get your CFE, um, but there are a number of ways, you know, online classes, obviously in person, but uh, it's safe to say that anything in person uh, probably is going to be virtual until Q3 of 2021. Um, obviously everything is subject to change, but you know, that's my personal opinion. Um, but uh, so obviously everybody's had, having to you know, make changes and uh, do things virtually. We're just coming off of our virtual marketing operations and development conference, which occurred this week. Um, if anybody missed it, uh, you could actually purchase um, the recording, um, whether it's the entire set or just the marketing piece, the operations piece or the development piece. I know you can do that. Um, but again, it's, it's all about education and continuing your education because you want to make sure that, you know, it's all about best practices. You want to make sure that you're, you're benchmarking yourself against uh, your, either your direct competitors or your peers. Because as we all know, franchising is franchising, whether you're switching out mufflers, flipping hamburgers, or trying to fill, fill hotel beds, franchising is, is pretty much all the same. Um, and, and, you know, from my vantage point, um, you know, I just see this year over year and even currently, um, you know, our members learn from one another. They share ideas with one another. Uh, we started hosting through our supplier board um, monthly workshops to help the supplier community because they're having a tough time right now. And then obviously the franchisee community is, you know, depending on the industry, they're having a very tough time. And of course, uh, you know, you know, they were uh, most of the franchisees were all listening in on all of our webinars, uh, all of the conference calls that our government relations team was having. We were helping direct them uh, to our supplier members to help them, you know, get the PPP funds. We were helping them regarding, you know, directing them to the folks that could help them with lease negotiations. And this is all ongoing as well. So in, in Paul, within in Paul, IFA, uh, hey, you know, Paul. the franchising community. Um, yeah, buddy. Hey, hey, sorry to interrupt. Just real quick. I just want to em reiterate and emphasize a point that you were oh, making no. there yeah. just about the webinars and the educational uh, uh, value yeah. that you, you when the, the whole pandemic hit and everything was going on. I mean, the, the quality of your presentations and knowledge base and information and experts. And I mean, there were uh, the, 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 the uh, quality was incredible. The uh, expertise, I mean, you, were, you had major CEOs from large brands uh, that, were, that are IFA members that came on that, you know, I don't know under normal conditions that they do, but I mean, we're talking major players in franchising and just really globally in business. And they were on giving their uh, feedback, opinion, advice, what they'd been hearing. And so just, just as, a, as a member, you know, I, I mean, I can tell you, it, it was really impressive with everything that, uh, that uh, the IFA was doing then and continues to do certainly, but just, uh, I appreciate that response as someone who oh, thanks, is a, as, yeah. as a member and just as someone who, uh, you know, look, we, we were all in the same boat together and I just appreciate uh, the, the, what you were able to offer and provide to just further help us out. So I appreciate that. No, and thank you. And, and, you know, we're going to be doing it ongoing. Um, and, and uh, you know, our conferences department just shared with me a, a number of w webinars. And of course they always, they always tap me to, to, to kind of host things. So uh, I know we have uh, 
I don't know what the topics are. I didn't focus on that, but I know in the in the next six weeks we have looks like a webinar almost uh, uh, a couple of, couple of times a week coming up. And this all, and it also ties into the uh, into the election uh, the election cycle as well, um, because um, uh, you know we are you know, and our government relations team again had had by Matt Howler. You know we're just trying to stay on top of things because obviously whenever there's a a, ch a change, whether it's on the House side, the Senate side, or at the presidential level, you know, uh, believe me, we're you know we're always uh, trying to stay ten steps ahead of things. So. Um, you know, so again, Tom, yes, I mean, uh, you know, we heard uh, and continue to hear from our members uh, how valuable uh, it's all about, listen, it's all about communication. And that's, and that's what we did. I mean, early on in the pandemic, uh, 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 my direct boss, our chief revenue officer, Jennifer Brandine, she and I sat down one night uh, in, in late March and a series of the gosh, 20 topics that we thought would be very important that our members wanted to hear about. And, um, and then we quickly uh, rolled out a, a webinar series. And I, and, you know, to your point, I mean, at one point we were doing, you know, two to three webinars a day and, um, and, uh, and, and it was even on specific verticals within franchising. And yeah, we had, you know, the heads of franchise companies, we had, um, you know, our thought leaders on the supplier side. Um, we had, uh, you know, franchisees involved you know, providing, you know, uh, you know, their thoughts, uh, you know, that, that they were experiencing, you know, truly at the grass level. Um, and, and it continues and it, and it continues to this day and will continue because um, at the end of the day, that's what an association does. It provides, it provides everybody, you know, with the resources and also with the education that they need and the knowledge base that they need. So you could all continue to grow and thrive at, at what you do and what you do best. Um, so, you know, again, it's uh, like any association, it's all about the government relations. And as we all know, franchising is heavily regulated. Um, and, and also, I mean, our, our CEO, Robert uh, Crisante, um, he was part of, uh, of opening up, uh, you know, a task force, um, a White House task force on opening up America. And we had a number of our CEOs um, uh, that we invited to sit on this task force. Um, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, we, um, you know, just from my perspective, it seems like you know, we have more access to this White House than we have to any other White House in the past. Um, uh, we have a, a very good relationship with uh, Secretary Mnuchin. Um, and, um, and listen, at the end of the day, uh, you know, that's, that's how things operate in DC. Um, you know, we do have a, you know, a very strong, uh, 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 Political action, uh, you know, a pack, um, and um, and you know, because of that, you know, we're able to uh, donate to both sides of the aisle, and it helps uh, it helps us get access, and it helps us educate uh, um, the members of Congress um, and the regulators on how powerful and beneficial franchising is to the economy. And listen, I'm not going to mince words. I mean. Um, you know, franchising has been uh, directly affected by this pandemic. Franchisees are affected, franchisors, suppliers. Um, you know, uh, one of our close supplier members, Frandata, uh, we partnered up with them. We recently came out with some really good data um, uh, on the effects of the pandemic uh, and how it is affecting both jobs directly related to franchising, uh, you know, and, and just the revenue that franchise brings to the U.S. economy. Um, and and how beneficial uh, you know PPP funds have been, um, and uh, you know happy to share that with anybody. Uh, for those of you who haven't received it from from IFA yet, uh, if you're not an IFA member, and if you're not an IFA member, I'm still happy to share it with you. Um, but yes, I mean uh, it, it is all about um, education, um, best practices, uh, networking with your peers. Um, you know, uh, you know. People contact me on a daily, weekly basis. You know, if if people uh, you, you know want to benchmark certain things, if they want to know, you know, how much PPP or PPE rather, uh, you know, people people are spending or their franchisees are spending. You know, uh, you know how much are they using? You know, where are they getting it from? Um, you know, what's the price? Yeah, the the average price point. Um, 
you know, I'll reach out to our members, um, whether they're board members or other folks in specific, you know, verticals um, to get that information. Um, you know, so people, you know, utilize me and, and my colleagues um, uh, frequently for, you know, to, to benchmark uh, um, ideas that they might have, um, you know, or if people, you know, sit down uh, and have, you know, their, their Monday or Tuesday, Tuesday morning uh, meetings, um, uh, it always seems like historically, it's always on Mondays or Tuesdays, because it seems like members always reach out to me on, on, on Tuesdays, uh, you know, with, you know, with uh, requests or questions. Uh, and uh, it came up at a, at a team meeting that they were having and they were like, well, let's, let's ask IFA and see if they could help us. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I, I do that all the time. Um, and if I don't have the answer, I will usually get the answer. Um, and, uh, and that's the wonderful thing about franchising. I mean, it's truly a relationship business. Um, and I mean, every business is a relationship business, but franchising truly is. I mean, so Tom, as you know, because um, we spare a certain amount of time uh, or we did traveling around the country. I mean, I think, you know, my wings are definitely going to be clipped for a while, but, you know, we call it the franchise family. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of value to that, right, Tom? A lot of value because we, Absolutely. we, we could all share, you know, we all, we all have each other to kind of lean on. And that's what I've been telling people throughout the pandemic is that we are, we are here. We are, you know, we are here uh, together. We are going to get through this together. And, uh, and, and there's no reason to, to, to feel like, you know, you're going to get through this alone. And, uh, and there's plenty of people in the franchising community uh, through IFA to, you know, to help you out. Yeah, no. And that, that's a great point, Paul. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed it through it, IFA members has been, uh, you, you know, it's interesting. You would never think uh, to your point earlier on, if, if you run a, let, let's say, a, a you know, a, whatever, a restaurant or a retail business or a, a manufacturing company or a supply or distribution business or a what, whatever, a, a home painting company. Exactly, you, know, you never yeah. really, you, whatever kind of business you're in and franchising, when you're selling franchises, kind of any franchise becomes your competitor. Um, you know, exactly. even though locally you don't compete for those same services, but you're all kind of competing for those same buyers of people who are looking to buy a franchise. And uh, the thing that's been, uh, that I have noticed overwhelmingly, uh, certainly there are exceptions, but overwhelmingly has been the, uh, the camaraderie that you're describing and the willingness to share, the willingness to provide and share best practices amongst other members. And, you know, it's just refreshing to see in the industry. So I, I appreciate that as a member. And when I see that and I am receiving that, it, you know, it's, it's kind of this uh, upward spiral momentum. It makes me feel compelled to want to share as well with other members and to provide exactly. extras. So it, it's 100%. kind of this, yeah, this, this cir ongoing circle that just keeps going and going and going in a positive direction. Yeah, I couldn't uh, agree with you 100%, my friend. Um, and, uh, you know, we see that uh, day over day, week over week, uh, month over month. It, it just happens all the time. Um, because, yes, I mean, there's, you know, 300 different lines of business, over 100 different industries that franchise. Um, and, yes, there are obviously competitors uh, within each vertical. Um, but, again, um, you know, uh, you know, franchising is all the same, really. And, and people are always, the one thing I've always noticed is that people are always willing to give back uh, to the people coming up the ladder behind them. I see it all the time. Um, there are so many mentors in franchising, um, so many mentors. And, you know, one thing I also noticed, not, not that people, you know, especially emerging or startup brands are, you know, need to be looking for an exit strategy, but I'll tell you, I mean, people do use, uh, you know, IFA and the relationships that they build as an exit strategy. I mean, you know, I'm seeing it more and more, especially during the pandemic. There's, there's a lot of deals out there. There's a lot of acquisitions happening. And, um, you know, whether it's, you know, on the private equity side or, or, you know, you know, some of these, you know, you know, these groups that are, you know, tend to be, you know, you know, funded by private equity, but, you know, you know, there are folks out there that are, are, are acquiring brands. Uh, you know, it always tends to be on the service service side or on the, 
or on the you know the restaurant food restaurant side. Um, but you know people like to utilize their contacts and connections through IFA, mm -hmm. um, you know, as an exit strategy too. I mean, I've seen it for years now. Well, I was um, just going to, I was just going to say, Paul, I, I have a couple clients that were connected um, IFA members and one very, very long established IFA member, uh, very mature franchise brand and non-food, you know, non-retail type business. And just in kind of conversation mentioned, Hey, there might be a connection here. Uh, for you to connect with another brand that's maybe looking for a potential exit, maybe, you know, kind of a deal. And I think there's a, I think they may end up doing uh, some kind of a, a deal together for an exit strategy uh, for Excellent. the, uh, for yeah. the, the, the smaller, you know, brand that was looking for kind of that partner. And I think there's, I, I don't know how the deal is going to get worked, but it's going to be something to exactly like what you're describing. And these are things that never hit the open market. The, you know, no. no, no one ever knows about these. This doesn't ever hit it's never exactly. public. It's just a couple connectors that, that make it happen. And you're, you're connected to, you know, a, a, thousands of, of people that you're connecting all the time. So, and, and you've connected me with many folks. So I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and likewise, I can't thank you enough. You've always been a huge support over, uh, you know, over the years, Tom, can't thank you uh, enough. Uh, you know, you're always uh, helping to promote IFA uh, to your client base and just IFA in general. And I, and I, you know, I, you know, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, it, you know, it's just, uh, I, thank you, my friend. Can't well, you're welcome. You. You're welcome. Well, I, I know I've kind of interrupted your presentation. Do you have other no, pieces? No, not at all. Do you, no, do no. You have... um, I, I, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, um, uh, it always does come back to, you know, like where you and I were discussing before we, we kick things off. It really does come back to, uh, you know, to advocacy and public policy, um, you know, because, at the end of the day, we have, you know, a seasoned team of government relations professionals, and they're there day in and day out, um, you know, monitoring, uh, you know, bills that are being introduced, whether it's at the state or federal side, um, to make sure that, uh, you know, we're there to basically protect the business format franchise model. Um, you know, you know, as a you know, by supporting IFA and helping, you know, helping us, uh, you know, financially through your membership dollars, um, you know, or even by, you know, donating to our, uh, our PAC, Fran PAC, um, we're able to, again, protect franchising so you could continue to grow and thrive and not worry about it. So whether it's, you know, you know, the, the ongoing joint employer issue, um, which, you know, in California, AB5, we've been, you know, we continue to battle that. Um, or whether it's, you know, whether it's other, you know, other issues that we're dealing with, you know, like the FASB issue, um, you know, which is the Financial Accounting Standard Board. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, we've been dealing with as well, which greatly, greatly affects those startup and emerging brands. But, uh, you know, that's been an ongoing educational effort. And, and, um, and, and in, in regards to the FASB change, uh, you were able to, uh, you know, help uh, basically exactly. delay it for yes. a year, basically push it back, you know, franchising. We were the it. community yeah. at large is, you know, kind of what, what, what's going to happen? What is this going to be? This whole new change. And then the pandemic and all, it, you know, it, it was a huge, huge help. So I, I know you, you made that, you made that happen, bottom line. Yeah, no, I mean, we were, you know, you know, and it's not, when I say we, I don't mean, you know, you know, listen, IFA is a, is a membership organization. Um, it belongs to the dues paying members. I mean, we're the stewards of the organization. That's, that's what I like to say. Um, we utilized our members, uh, you know, some of our supplier members, uh, some of our franchisor members, CEOs, uh, you know, we had to, you know, we had to educate the folks uh, at, at FASB and continually educate them because, uh, you know, this, this was to me, a, 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 you know, when I first heard about it and started to, and I still don't fully, you know, understand it. I'm not, I'm not an accounting guy, but it, it has, it has some major, had and has some major impact uh, on franchising. But again, again, to your point, yeah, we were able to, to, to hold things off and, and we will continue and, and do continue. We have an open dialogue with FASB and, um, and, you know, with the support of our members, uh, like we do with anything, we will, uh, 
we will, uh, you know, we will continue to fight the fight. Well, I appreciate it, Paul. Um, I know we've got some folks tuned in here. Are there any questions for Paul um, that he might be able to answer or talk through or talk about in reference to the International Franchise Association, what it's doing, involved with, um, anything in that regard? We'll open it up here for a minute or two. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. And if there aren't any questions, that's fine. Um, you know, I don't know if Tom could provide you all with my email address or if you want to, you know, have folks reach out to me at any, you know, the, you know, by all means, you could also find me on the IFA website, you know, franchise.org under the staff listings, but you, yeah. you know, uh, listen, people, people contact me all the time. So uh, if you have a question now, happy to answer it. If not, um, you know, I, I, you know, reach out to me whenever I'm always uh, more than happy and willing to, uh, to answer questions about anything at any time. So. Paul, you mentioned that um, you know the pandemic has affected franchisors and franchisees. Do you have any metrics about what the decline in kind of growth has been? Yes, um, I, I I don't have those numbers in front of me, but um, earlier on I I had referred to uh, a recent study that was conducted um, by Fran Data, uh, and IFA. Um, I will uh, if you shoot me an email um, and I'll. I'll verbally give you my email address. I could get those metrics to you um, because they were, they were pretty powerful. Um, I was looking to see if I had the press release. I apologize. I cannot, uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have it on hand, but I could get that to you. Um, my email, just, just so you all have it, is P for Paul. So it's P and then my last name, which is R-O-C-C-H. I O at franchise.org. So P Rocchio at franchise.org. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email and I will uh, get that information over to you. But yes, I mean, um, uh, uh, yes, franchising has been obviously like all industries. Uh, and again, we're not an industry where, you know, there's so many different industries in franchising. Some have done better than others, but uh, um, but I will be able to share that information with you. But very, very good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and were, you, were you asking about that in terms of just the impact to uh, kind of revenue for the units or just uh, maybe franchise sales? Or did, did you have a particular point yeah, there? I, part? Based on kind of the, the momentum of franchise sales yeah. and the, the amount of interest that people have given the pandemic. Because reading in the paper today, they say that unemployment is going to kind of stay high and probably peak mid-2021, second, third quarter. So there's going to be, a, I, I see a lot of people yes. being unemployed. Yes. And in some cases, it creates opportunities. The other side of that is, you know, franchise requires financing. And in situations like this, financing gets a little tighter. So there's one kind of push. And then there's one kind of pull, um, and I'm just curious as to you know, where that where the growth on kind of number of new franchises rather than revenue is. Uh, well, the, number of new. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go no. Ahead, I, I I was just going to say. Uh, you, you know, I, I, this is an unintended plug for next week, but next Friday <laughs> session, next Friday's <laughs> webinar, I'm hosting, and I'm talking about this exact topic about what's going on with current franchise sales trends, reviewing all the data Excellent. from franchise data, current sales data, economic data, uh, from high level uh, macro economic data down to small business, retail trends and uh, franchise trends. So um, I, I, I've been doing an update on the kind of the trends of that each, you know, we're, we're starting to do that monthly. Now we did one in August, September, we have one coming up next week. So um, not to, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is kind of a plug. It's perfect timing. Thanks for planting that. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we, we, we did that update. And uh, actually, so I, I hope I'm free next Friday. I, I may have to listen in on that one. Yeah. Yeah, but and, and I know um, Paul. Paul has some great data. I'm almost here too. Yeah, and, and yeah, because um, the specifically on franchise sales, um, uh, the 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 info from Fran Data is is more of a 
you know, at the, at the macro level, uh, just the overall, overall effects uh, of the pandemic on, on franchising. Uh, not, probably not, I'm almost positive brand dev or, or, or new brands coming into the market. Um, you know, I know some of our, uh, some of our other supplier members have some good, uh, you know, sales information, sales data, um, whether it's, you know, current during the pandemic, I'd have to look into that. Um, but, um, and Tom, I hope I'm free next week because uh, I may have to, I may have to listen in on, uh, on your webinar. Um, <laughs> or do you, do you record, do you record these webinars? Or are they available yeah, yeah. on your website? Yeah, we, oh, we good, record good. it. Yeah, we share it. Yeah, we, we publish it up on our YouTube <laughs> channel and post it on our website. Oh, yes. Excellent. I can always, and I can listen to it at uh, two in the morning. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's great. Um, but but uh, good good question. Thank you. Well, great. Well, if if there aren't any other questions here, Paul, I'd like to thank you for being here today. And no, you're um, welcome, buddy. Yeah, I, I greatly appreciate you being here. We'll get this published and sent out. So if anyone wants to watch it again or share this with someone in their company or organization that maybe wants to tune in or get to know the International Franchise Association better. And again, it's procchio at franchise.org. Uh, procchio, R-O-C-C-H-I-O uh, at franchise.org. And uh, franchise.org, which is the International Franchise Association's website, has tons of information. Uh, as well on franchising. So we'll make sure to share that. And uh, Paul, thank you again for being here. Thank you to our guests and attendees for being here as well. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy it. And um, uh, we'll be back here same time, same place next week. Uh, and we'll be talking about uh, current franchise sales trends and what's happening right now and all the most current data. So uh, we'll have that available for you next Excellent. week. Tom, thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity. For everybody who joined us today, thank you very much. Uh, and to Tom, again, thank you, buddy. Really, really appreciate uh, uh, you uh, uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, look forward to seeing you soon, I hope, my friend. Stay well, yeah, buddy. You, you too. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks, Yvonne. Appreciate it. Take care, guys.